Hello and welcome again to the Rider Review. This is Eric Carrot Rider, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2021 romantic comedy titled We Broke Up. Now, We Broke Up runs for one hour and 20 minutes long. It is directed by Jeff Rosenberg. The script was written by Jeff Rosenberg and Laura Jackman. It is produced by Jeff Rosenberg, Matt Ratner, John Herman, and Mason Novick. It was composed by Nick Cena, the cinematography by Andrew Aiello, and it was edited by Stephanie Kaznocha. And the stars of the movie are Aya Cash, William Jackson Harper, Sarah Bolger, Tony Caballero, Perry Gilpin, Kobe Libby, Azita Genizada, Zach Steiner, Eduardo Franco, uh, Larissa Olenek. Jeez, I haven't heard that name in a long time. If you remember back in the late 1990s, of course, she was the star of that uh, Nickelodeon show, Alex Mack, you know, where she accidentally gets dumped with uh, puddle water, but the puddle water actually contains some kind of nuclear chemical that actually gave her incredible superpowers. But she is, like, forced to keep it secret, and really only two people know about her secret, her best friend Ray and her sister. Joining out the cast includes Emily Pendergast, Eric Martig, Brenda Ballard, Gary Ballard, Pedro Lopez, Lee Chen, Alex Rich, and Tom Zawacki. Yes, as the old saying goes from the legendary composer and singer Neil Sadaka, it is true that breaking up is hard to do. What's even more awkward is that it happens to occur at the wedding of a sibling, and to avoid ruining this joyous occasion, said former lovers, they now have to pretend that they are still in a relationship. The focus of this romantic comedy, We Broke Up, is about how Lori, played by Aya Cash, and Doug, played by William Jackson Harper, can go through this ordeal without causing any kind of commotion or a scene, as her younger sister, B, played by Sarah Bolger, is about to marry her lover, Jason, played by Tony Caballero. While this is happening, Lori and Doug struggle to question if this breakup is really what they want, or is there a way they can repair the cracks in their relationship? Now you see, Lori and Doug have been a steady couple for a decade. They live in, uh, I guess, uh, an average apartment. Uh, she has a job at a coffee shop. I guess she's a clerk or just some on-the-spot employee. Doug probably has a, has a job of his own. They seem to be quite fine with each other. But except for that Doug has been asking Lori for many years, when will they tie the knot? He feels that their relationship, although has been they've been boyfriend and girlfriend for a decade, Doug, of course, has this vision, this this ambition that, you know, he wants he and Lori to get married, live in a house, pay off mortgages and bills and whatnot, raise a family, even though She's 39 years old. She doesn't really have that much time left. So if they're actually going to have children of their own, maybe they'll probably be okay if they have maybe one or two children. You know, they might get twins. Who knows? I don't know. Anyhow, she's running out of time when it comes to having children. 
And he's also running low on patience either. On patience too. He's been asking her to tie the knot. Well, so one day they go to a bar. And they have a few drinks. When he finally pops the question to her, once again, same result. Although, although different scenario. First she throws up on his lap, and then she rejects his request. This, of course, caused them to say, Okay, so you don't want to commit, then what's the point of us staying together? So they decided to break up. But the thing is, here's the cats. Lori's sister is about to get married to a, a carefree, somewhat laid-back, whimsical, friendly guy. And maybe just a cool guy to hang around with named Jason. Now, the difference between Lori and Doug and B and Jason is that you know, B and Jason seem to be, you know, the polar opposite to Laurie and Doug. While B and Jason are this carefree, laid-back, easy-to-take-life approach type of couple, Laurie and Doug, well, they're pretty much, you know, drab in nature. You know, they're, 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 they hardly ever really smile. I mean, you can understand Doug's situation. Because he's been asking Lori for many, for many years when they're going to get married. And Lori keeps rejecting him. So we can understand Doug's situation. Lori, on the other hand, there never really ever is any reason... As to why she doesn't want to marry Doug. Is it because of cold feet? Is it because she just doesn't feel that marriage is a necessary thing? Is she just happy the way she is? Is she fear of commitment? What it is, nobody knows. Whereas in the case of B and Jason... They've only pretty much known each other for about a month and are already ready to tie the knot. Now, the person behind this, the person who is like really stuck in the middle is their mother, Lori and B's mother. While Doug seems to feel like a part of the family, which is the reason why he's going along with this whole conceal the relationship thing by pretending they're still a couple, even though they broke up. And he doesn't want to spill the beans till after the wedding. It's because I guess if Doug was to walk out on them and not attend the wedding, then they'll know that something's wrong. So in order to prevent causing a scene... They'll do the wedding, and then they'll make the announcement that they broke up. They'll just go along. So, when Doug finally proposes, once again, like Rory balks at the opportunity, causing Doug to throw in the towel, ending the relationship, just before B and Jason's summer themed wedding. Summer camp themed wedding. Which I actually thought was pretty original. It's kind of cool. Because it's original. It's never been done before. We've had outdoor weddings. We of course have had weddings in places where we pray. Whether it be churches. Whether it be chapels. Synagogues. Mosques. Temples. You name it. We've had outdoor weddings. We've had weddings taking place at a rank. We've had redneck weddings. But never before have we ever seen a wedding taking place at a summer camp. Now, this is like a summer camp. Although the, the setting is like at a summer camp, 
but it actually has more like a hotel accommodation. Sure, they're going to be spending time in a dusty cabin, and they're going to do all the summer camp shit that we had done when we were kids. Like waking up at the crack of eight, brushing our teeth, getting our clothes on, and doing all kinds of camp activities like building a birdhouse, canoeing, swimming by the lake, uh, arts and crafts. Sports, tug of war. But the difference is, is that this is more like a summer camp for adults, which means that they can still social, they can do, unlike kids at, at camp where they roast marshmallows and things like that, at this camp, they can socialize, they could drink beer. Hell, you could get laid and you won't get uh, reprimanded by a director because there is no director. It's kind of like, like a hotel accommodation set at a summer camp. So although they're doing all the campy activities, it, they still have to acknowledge the fact that this is a summer camp for adults. It's not for kids. So there's... A little more, little less limitations in how they approach things at camp. I mean, and of course they're going to be joined by, and of course the wedding guests are the other fellow campers, including, including the maid of honor, including the ring bearer, and all the other wedding guests are all part of this. Summer camp. His friends, her friends, his family, her family. And yeah, Doug, Lori and Doug are also going to take part while pretending they're still a couple, even though they are no longer. Sure, there is some, sure, there is some setbacks too, as you know, apparently, you know, Lori is still. Quite attractive for somebody who's 39 years old. She still looks really good for her age. Doug, you know, he's a handsome guy. So, of course, there's going to be... There's going to be people who will flirt with them. And it seems that... When they do flirt with... With different people... They tend to somewhat get a bit jealous of each other. Which makes me often wonder... Are Lori and Doug going to reconcile? Are they going to split up, go their other way, and go with these people who are flirting with them? Or were they really all this time meant for each other? They were both just being very, very stubborn. We don't know. You'll have to see it to be able to... to get into the movie. So under the direction of Jeff Rosenberg, the setting for this movie is the bizarre, albeit intriguing, epicenter for most of the jokes in this movie. Though a wedding with a summer camp theme, which I give credit to, is very, very original. Never been done before. I love it. I love originality. I love the fact that they came up with some new innovative ways to get married and try to avoid all the cliched stuff by putting on your Sunday best, your tuxedo and well, the tuxedo, well, the fancy dresses and the, and the tuxedo comes at the end once they're, once their campsite, once their rent for the campsite expires and the time for the big wedding, that's when they all start to dress up. But hey. Hey, it's at a summer camp. A wedding with a summer camp theme. Rosenberg, Rosenberg co-wrote the movie with Laura Jackman and delves into the summer camp venue as an excuse for the sisters who have so many memories they have together during these warm summer days. 
Yeah, let's not forget about the mosquitoes and the awful food. And the fact that you have to sleep in a dusty cabin with beds that have bed bugs in them. They reflect back on the many escapades they committed there while making this summer camp setting feel more like a holiday resort and less like a sleepaway dwelling you find in traditional summer camps. And that's kind of like what the summer camp theme is. Sure, the cabins are still there, but with nicer looking pools and beds and evening socials have a hotel look to them. Not only that, but B and Jason insist on playing old Bunyan, Paul Bunyan summer camp games, which consist of drinking competitions that take Lori and Doug's head out of the gutter, at least for a little while. Meanwhile, their mother, Adelaide, played by Perry Gilpin, has concerns, especially regarding B if she's rushing too fast in marrying Jason. In fact, Adelaide seems to somewhat be quite antagonistic towards Jason because of the fact that, for many reasons, I mean, number one, they've only mar known each other for about a month and right away they're getting married. And the fact that he was a, a divorcee who already has a nine-year-old son. So how does she even know that this marriage for Jason is going to work when his previous other marriage probably didn't? So I kind of understand why she's very quick to judge Jason and less so to quick Doug, to judge Doug. I mean, sometimes I often wonder why did she never interrogate Lori that much? Is because is because Doug has been part of their family for ten years and feels like he's a part of their family, while Jason is like I guess an outsider, an outcast. So he's kind of somewhat a little more exclusive to their family, but still, nonetheless, I don't think it's right for Adelaide to judge a person who she hardly knows. Maybe there's probably more deep-rooted explanations as to why Jason's first marriage didn't work. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's a bad person. It just takes time to get to know a person. Like I said, there's probably a deep-rooted story as to what happened. I mean, he has custody over his child. So, there's that. But I just love the fact that they're so carefree and seem like they're more of the cooler people to hang on around with than Lori and Doug, who seem to be so drab and melancholy most of the time. And only just play along with the summer camp theme, just as a way to get them out of their doldrums for a little bit. And enjoy the hot sun. And the activities. So though both couples are polar opposites to one another. Cash and Harper definitely share a chemistry that raises questions regarding the true feelings they have for each other. In different stages in the movie, one party member's sentiments seem to switch. At one point you might feel... Doug is taking this conflict very personally. And in other scenes, it's Lori carrying the heavy burden over her shoulders. And while you can, like I said, you can understand Doug is getting tired of being rejected, Lori seems to come across as being somewhat more passive-aggressive and doesn't seem like this is affecting her when really she is feeling more of the brunt than Doug. The whole misery deserves company comes into full effect for this emotionally fractured couple. The title itself has signs of some optimism, meaning that there might be a chance that this breakup is only temporary and not permanent. Maybe they just need to blow off some steam and B and Jason are there to help. And maybe this summer camp theme might get them to enjoy life once again 
and maybe even try to reconcile their differences and rectify what they have planned in store in the near future. But they've managed to work things out, making them the happy couple who will embark on the next chapter in life. They bring the kind of like the level of energy at a positive level, contrary to the drab lives that bestow upon Lori and Doug. It also helps that uh, Jeff Rosenberg and William Jackson Harper had collaborated before in The Good Place, where Rosenberg serves as an assistant director and Harper is one of the principal cast. So I guess it's good that that two people who know each other can help make the film all the more watchable. But the film raises many questions relating to the situations of our leading characters. Are we in the right are they in the right to break up? Is it too late to fix whatever problems we had in the past? Were we ever meant to each other to begin with? And if we do reconcile, where do we go from here? And most importantly, how will he explain the situation to my family? Those are the questions that Laurie should be asking. And Doug as well. All of these conflicts are set in a rather absurd situation. The anger and disparity could not be at a time where joy and happiness is in the air as one couple is getting married while the other one is breaking up. Sure, it's awkward. Sure, they have to go into one awkward situation after another. But somehow they still manage to work things out thanks to the brilliant chemistry that Cash and Harper have for each other. Hey, you want to bring on the diversity thing? Why not? I mean, it's good to see that Laurie and B are married to people who are of a different race and religion. I mean, it appears that Laurie and B seem to come from a Jewish family when they're actually not marrying Jewish people. I mean, I believe Jason is a Christian. And I guess you can add double points for Laurie because... Her boyfriend is not only a non-Christian, he's also African-American. So I guess that gives her two bonus points in the diversity machine. But still, I'm glad that they never really bring this up. They never bring the race game into the, into the, into the narrative. So at least I'll give credit where that is due. It's not about race in this movie. It's not about religion. It's not about gender issues or any kind of politics. And I'm glad they went that direction. It's about two people in a precarious situation trying to make the most out of it while not trying to cause a scene while other two are on the path to happiness and prosperity. And that's where the movie stands. No, Nothing else in between. No other... No other political bullshit. Everything is all about about these two couples in hopes that one of them has a successful marriage in the future, while others can. While the other two, we all try to hope that they could find some level of peace within each other, whether they reconcile or whether they go their own direction. They are likable people. I'm not saying that Laurie and Doug are not likable people, but they seem to be somewhat in a perpetual state of disparity. I hope that we can they can find happiness to whatever endeavor they wish to pursue. So while the situation is quite awkward and complex, Jeff Rosenberg makes this movie an easy watch and assures his audience that the movie will be executed as an easy-to-follow pattern and the scenarios are all tied nicely together to avoid any kind of confusion, no politics, 
no wokeness or anything. Just a simple romantic comedy with some feel-good moments, some good comedy scenes, some great narratives, and also the original idea of having a summer camp-themed wedding is pretty cool. With nicely done cinematography from Andrew Aiello and production design from Amelia Steely, the film takes great pleasure in creating the atmosphere of a summer camp-themed wedding while trying to see if the leading couple can rectify their relationship or if the situation is all too bizarre for them. Relationships are not always guaranteed to be successful, but we sure hope that in this movie we broke up. It makes the effort into finding a solution to get these two back on track, whether it succeeds or fails. Either way, at least it tried. Hopefully, I mean, I really do feel for these characters. I mean, I'm not saying the movie is perfect, but it's still a good watch. And I like the execution of the movie. It's an easy flowing movie that doesn't try to complicate any issues. And it's a movie that we can just genuinely have fun with. So if I was to give this movie a scale out of 10, I would give We Broke Up from 2021 a 7 out of 10. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please feel free to do so. If you wish to leave a comment, go right ahead. Because remember the three simple rules, be kind, be courteous, and please refrain from any rude comments. And I'll be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Wright Rider saying, keep watching those movies. And I'll see you around. Goodbye.